pitiful campaign. Avis is only number two, so we try harder. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Here I was. I didn't like it. Bud didn't like it. Petrie didn't like it. Andre Meyer hated it. And Bernbeck said it's a lousy campaign. He really did. He said our, our market research guy tells us that if you run this business, it'll it, it run these ads, it'll kill your business. And uh, I said, well, what do you recommend? We haven't been advertising for a month in our sales. He said, I recommend you run it. But he said, important thing to remember, if your people are going to do these things, that's one thing. Then it may work. But if your people are not going to do it and are not going to know what we're saying in publications that they don't read, like the Wall Street Journal, the financial pages of the, of the local paper and Time magazine and so forth, if, if they don't know what, what we're saying about them and a customer comes up and says, you're the outfit that tries harder, and they say, why? It's going to backfire. Uh, so you've got to do something to make your people aware. So we decided, we all went along with it, decided to go uh, with the ads, and then we put on a dog and pony show, and I covered 30 cities myself. And at that time, we were about half union, half non-union, and I didn't even ask which was which. Uh, uh, I went out, and we, we'd go to the, to the uh, car servicing facility, put up all the signs, the management, would man the counters and uh, I went into my spiel and I said uh, here's what we're going to say about you you clean the ashtrays you fill the gas tanks you make sure there's a spare and so forth and so on I said this company has never made a profit for 13 years and we need about two more rentals off each plane that comes in and I want to point out to you that you've got the newest cars in the industry now, and if you form the habit of ducking behind the counter whenever a plane lands for fear of renting a car, you can stop doing that now because you've got the best cars. And uh, if all I can say is that we desperately need your help if we're going to survive. And uh, that's all i got to say. And, you know, they usually say, well, this is, sounds like a speed-up to me. And I said, exactly, that's exactly what we've been working for. And we've done everything we can do from headquarters. Now you've got to put the other end together. I said, you're probably the worst paid in the industry. And I'll do what I can to make sure you're the best paid if we uh, succeed and go into the black. And the second question was always, are you the president? What does a president do? And I said, the president goes out and asks the people for help when he needs help, and that's what I'm doing. So help or quit and go over and work for Hertz. And uh, so, you know, we didn't know for several months, but it became evident that they really liked the idea and they liked the attention they were getting from customers and the questions. And what we did was we sent them an ad with each paycheck. You know, we'd bundle the paychecks for Peoria and put in, if there were 30 employees, we'd put in 30 copies of the next ad to come out. So with their paycheck, they'd get a copy of the, of the next ad. So they were always ahead of the customers. And we did that and... Uh, it worked, and our growth rate started to increase to about 35%. In April of 64, which was about a year after we went in, it broke into the black, and it uh, went on from there. And people would rent cars even if we weren't giving the best service or didn't have the biggest selection or whatever just because we were underdogs and uh, it's sort of like the people used to feel in Brooklyn about the Brooklyn Dodgers we were the home team and uh, and they loved us uh, <clears throat> I give all credit to Doyle Dane Burnback and the and our employees for making that happen that's something that the management can't control it just the management just loves it when it happens.